The API challenges does work in the cloud. You can access it in the cloud. You're working in multi-user mode so other people can be accessing the data, which for beginners um, might make things a little bit more confusing because you're wondering why data has appeared or disappeared. So we have the ability to run the API challenges as a local application on our machine. And in this video, I'm just going to show you how to do that. So on the evotester.com slash API challenges page, and which will redirect to page slash tools slash API challenges. We will always have a link to the Heroku or wherever this version is hosted in the cloud, and we'll have a link to the download version. So the download version should take us directly to the release where we can download the jar file. Or you can go off to github.com slash evil tester slash thingifier slash releases and you'll find all the releases there. It's just the link on evotest.com slash API challenges will take you directly to the most recent version. So here we want to download the API challenges jar file. And this is just a jar file. We can put this anywhere on our system because there's no install required. It's just a, a file that we download. And I'm just going to add this into a folder on my desktop. So there I have API challenges.jar in a folder on my desktop. And I've done the same thing on Windows because we're going to look at how to run this on Mac, how to run it on Windows. Now to run this, we need to have Java installed. You'll know if you've got Java installed because when you get a terminal up or a command line, which I'll show you how to do on Windows in a second, you'll know if you've got Java running because if you type Java, it's not there, it will tell you. If it is there, you'll see all this um, information printed out saying you didn't tell me what to run. So if you can run the Java command, then the API challenges.jar should work. If you don't have Java installed, then go to java.com and download it from there, or go to adoptopenjdk.net to download the JDK. So your choice, java.com or the adopt open JDK. So on Windows, I would get a file explorer up. I go to the folder where I had installed it. And in this case, it's on the desktop. I have a folder called API Challenger where I've got the API challenges. And in the top line here, where if I click on it, I can see the path. I'm just going to type CMD and that will bring up a command prompt. And your other choice is to just get a command prompt straight away and navigate to the folder. But on Windows, this is nice and easy. Then if I do DIR, I can see the API challenges jar in there. And if I just type Java minus jar API challenges dot jar, run that, we'll see a bunch of messages getting written to the screen. And it will tell me that the application is running at HTTP colon slash slash localhost 4567. So if I get a browser up and go to HTTP colon slash slash local host colon 4567, then we should see the application running here on our machine. And then we're ready to start making API calls. And our challenges will be shown in the list. So to stop the application, either control C or exit the uh, command line, and the application will stop. And the mistake that some people make is that they double click on the application. It starts up and runs, but they don't realize that it's running. So the way to check is to do what we did before, go to localhost colon 4567. And if we can do that, then it's running in the background. We just don't know about it. And the way you stop the application then is just put slash shut down at the end. And this shutdown link will only work on the single user version on your local machine. It will stop the application and it will no longer be running in the background. So that stops. If I go to localhost 4567 again, it won't be working. So that's running it on Windows. On Mac, it's much the same. I'll do Alt Space, get the terminal up. And then I need to navigate to where I've installed it, which is in my desktop on uh, API Challenger. If I look in there, I can see the API Challenges jar. I'll just do Java minus jar 
API challenges dot jar. I will say yes, I want to allow that to give it the permissions. Then we'll see all the messages pop up and the application will now be running on my machine at localhost 4567. 4567 and there is the application running. So now we make some API calls. So any API system will work fine. So I'm going to create a new request here. New request. This is Insomnia. And I'll just say get to do's. And I'll issue a get request on HTTP colon slash slash local host 4567 slash to do's. And we'll see all the to do's coming back from the system in the API. So it's running locally and we have a, an API GUI connected to the application and now I can start experimenting with and completing the challenges. Now in single user mode, what we'll see is that in the same folder that the application's running, so I'm just gonna close the application down, do an LS, we can see that there's a data file being created called REST API Challenges single player dot data dot text. This is the data that we're using to track the challenges in the system. So when I run the application now, it will load my challenges and track them over time. I don't have to do anything special. I don't have to register a user. I just run it locally, interact with the application and the challenges will be saved in this file, REST API challenges, single player data.txt. If you're doing it multi-user on the cloud, you have to register a an X challenger session and we've got a video showing how to do that, which is why it's just that much easier to do it locally. You have your own data, no one's going to interfere with your data, it's going to be obvious what's happening and your challenges are stored locally. It may be more convenient to do it on the cloud and that's fine, we support that, but if you want real total control, then use the downloadable version and run it locally. Remember, we have more videos covering how to use the challenger, the instructions, and again, you'll find all the links for this at eviltester.com slash API challenges.